What's up, people? I'm Garrett Johnson, and you're listening to Consider Before Consuming, a podcast by Fight the New Drug. Today's conversation is with Chanel Connell. She's a dating coach, entrepreneur, actress, and a social media influencer. During this conversation, Chanel talks about the importance of critical thinking and why she's anti-pornography and at the same time sex positive um, and how to be tactful when discussing the harmful effects of pornography and sexual exploitation. So overall, it was a great conversation. With that being said, we hope you enjoy this episode of Consider Before Consuming. We want to welcome to the podcast Chanel Connell. Welcome Hi. to the podcast. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. So uh, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us. I could not be more excited to talk to you guys about all you do and get to know uh, a little bit more about what you guys are like. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I don't know what that's, I'm saying. That's... Sorry, can we get that out? <laughs> no, we're going to leave that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think it's important because like like you said, <laughs> you said uh, it will get to know what you guys are like, and r- the reality is is like that's part of that's part of building a relationship is uh, is getting to know each other, Huge. and so we're uh, excited. Yeah, I feel to like I only know you guys via like DM and email, so it's nice to put a voice to everything. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm just one of the voices. We have a whole team here that are. Um, a huge play roles, play big roles in this process of educating on the harmful effects of pornography. So, yeah, we are lucky to have you on. You're currently in, are you in Vancouver? I am in Kelowna, British Columbia. So about four hours away from Vancouver. Okay. But if you like wine, we have a lot of wine here. Really? Nice. Yeah. It's wine country. It's kind of like a Napa Valley. Is it? But in Canada. Yeah. Sounds pretty. Mm-hmm. My wife and I, we drove up to Banff, Canada. Okay. And then we drove across the country to Vancouver. Got it. And then this one time, I rode my bicycle from Vancouver, Canada to the bottom of Washington. So okay. I've seen, and then I've been to Toronto and to Hamilton. I through Kelowna then. That's what I'm no, wondering. No, you wouldn't need to for Washington. My ex used to drive all the way up from Silverdale to come see me. Where is in Silverdale? Kelowna. Um, it's just like a ferry ride out of Seattle. Oh, okay. He was in the the Navy. Gotcha. And so I I know that route decently well. <laughs> it's pretty. It's very pretty. It is very nice. Cool. Well, um, we are excited to get to know you, Chanel. Um, you've done a lot with Fight the New Drug. Yeah. Um, and we appreciate you doing your part in the movement. Uh, we really couldn't do it without you and, and people like you. So thanks. Well, I appreciate that you guys like let me join in on the conversation and on the movement and be an advocate and that you trusted what I had to say and my words with something that can be a very sensitive topic, but also shouldn't be taboo to right. talk about. Well, I actually really love your posts. I can tell that you put a lot of time into them. Mm-hmm. You Thank don't just you. throw it out there on no, spur of the moment. I can't do anything like half. I have to go in 100%. I'm a very all or nothing person, which gets me into trouble sometimes. Sometimes I just like drop the ball <laughs> if my perfectionism isn't there. Other times I'll knock it out of the park. So I'm trying to find that middle For ground. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, every, I, I read a book once and it talked about how every strength has a balcony and a basement. Ooh. Like a, that's how they put it. Like a, okay. the pros and cons of a strength. So <laughs> your perfectionism, like you said, there's, there's pros and cons, but we, we enjoy it. Your, your posts are great. So thank you. we'll make sure to, um, link to your social media accounts. I appreciate that. So that our fighters, our audience who is listening, they can also benefit from your posts. I welcome anybody and everybody to my page. It's all about love and relationships and dating. So I feel like it was a very natural fit with Fight the New Drug because promoting healthy um, partnerships is a huge part of what I talk about. 
That's great. Um, you mentioned that you recently released some products. You said yesterday was so busy because you're releasing some content or some products. I did, yeah. So I just um, launched my company. It's called Created for Love. And you can find us on creativeforlove.ca. But I launched the very first um, tier of my business because I have kind of a three to five tier business plan. And the first of that is products that help um, enhance your relationships and love life, as well as make your single times a little bit more enjoyable. <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. So they're products with all like cheekier, funny sayings that are relationship or um, single focused, as well as some of them actually have helpful tools. Like I have a little coffee tumbler that you can take to a coffee shop and it has relationship status check boxes on them that say <laughs> single taken and then the one that's checked is open to you asking me out for coffee nice and i was like you know if you find a cute guy or gal like you could it's just the take perfect it twist mug. it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that's cool i like that mm-hmm, thank you well one thing that we've noticed as we've followed you chanel is that you're very positive and um, we love that about you we love that you're just pushing positivity into the world so that's cool I appreciate that. I try to leave people better off than I found them 110% of the time. That's a good goal. So before we get started and talk about the harmful effects of pornography and sexual exploitation, we wanted our audience to get to know you a little bit better. Totally. Let's do it. And so I wanted to ask, what is one of the biggest accomplishments that you have that you're proud of? Oh my goodness. I feel like I've had many different kinds of accomplishments. If I could talk, apparently talking is not one of them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, That are all from different sectors. Like I'm very proud, obviously, of what I'm doing with my products and finally launching a business that I've thought about and planned for three plus years. Um, But other accomplishments that I would say I'm extremely proud of are a couple years back I ran for Miss Universe Canada. Wow. Yeah, it was really fun, but definitely probably one of the most uh, trying and learning um, focused experiences of my life. I learned a lot about how much I could actually handle in terms of stress and how to appropriately multitask and keep your head on straight because I was in the thick of university when I entered into pageantry. Okay. And being that I'm only 5'3", Making it to top 20 and then also being nominated for the Humanitarian Award was a really big deal to me because I felt like I defied odds for myself that I wasn't expecting. And that was a really um, cool moment for me and like self-esteem building as well as uh, confidence. That's awesome. What is uh, the average height? You mentioned you were 5'3". What's the average oh. height when you, if you go to Miss Universe? I think the smallest woman, I believe that was Olivia Culpo, was 5'4 five, 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 or 5'5". Five, five. But normally they will not allow you to enter into the Miss Universe uh, pageants worldwide unless you are 5'7 and above. There are some countries that have height stipulations. Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. It's what are your crazy. thoughts on that? I don't like it because it, (laughs) (laughs) first of all, it just makes things hard for shorter women like myself. Right. Um, But it, it's frustrating when you see so much um, focus on promoting body positivity and different body shapes when the modeling industry and pageantry industry is still very uh, stigmatized towards height. Right. So you can have a curvier woman in a pageant now and they can uh, place quite high and i think that's amazing but short women still can't that's (laughs) and that needs to be worked on that's very interesting Mm -hmm. well that's a cool accomplishment yeah you can learn a lot of good skills in in the pat in the life of pageants so yes i recommend it it is not for the faint of heart but you learn a lot and it can be very confidence building if you meet the right people and stick with uh be true to yourself yeah exactly that's true well what's one thing that you haven't accomplished yet that you want to accomplish in your life oh man i would actually love to be an actress um but i feel i am on the path to accomplishing that i would say i'm an actress right now but i mean like a well-known one you know cool 
um, and a family. <laughs> I really want a family, nice. but I have to find a guy first. So for sure. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, what about your favorite book? Do you have Ooh. a favorite book? I don't know if I have a favorite book, but I have a favorite genre. Like I really love self-help dating books. Big shocker there. <laughs> self-help dating. That's right in line with your brand. Yes. Yeah. I can consume those um, probably within a day or two. Nice. So when you date a guy, is he required to follow along with these this book club that you have? No, um, <laughs> that then he would know all my secrets, though. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's strategic. Yeah, you got to be really strategic. Okay. So <clears throat> now that we're getting to know you a little bit better, we want to play a little bit of a, a game called This or That. Oh, I'm sure God. you've played it before. Yes, I love it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm very excited. So we'll run through a couple of these questions. Okay. Um, are you a cat person or a dog person? Ooh, dogs. But I love cats. They're cute, but dogs. <laughs> um, cardio or weights? Weights. I used to hate cardio. I'm getting better now, but weight training is where it's at for me. Nice. Music or podcasts? Podcasts. I feel like I learn a lot more when I'm putting my time into listening to a podcast. You're all about that productivity. Yeah, I just it's the efficiency. I don't have a lot of time in my life, so as much as I can consume knowledge, I'm going to listen to a podcast. Nice. Do you prefer you've talked about reading. Do you prefer books or ebooks? Uh, can we add a third option? Yes. Can we do audiobooks? Yes. I don't read well. Like I am the kind of person who will read the same paragraph four times over because I just can't keep track. To grasp the concept? Mm-hmm. I need the audio and I that I retain everything so much better, which wasn't great in university for me, but they are introducing audiobooks for textbooks now, which is kind of cool. I think they need to do more of that. What was your degree in, by the way? Psychology. That's great. Yeah. Oh, fun fact. I uh, just got accepted into a master's of counseling program. So Did you? I'm very excited. Yes. That's so cool. Good yeah. for you. Thank you. So what are you going to do? What, what, what are you going to do once you get your master's? Um, that is part of my three to five tier process with my business. So I do plan on putting out um, coaching courses, but then I also plan on having um, appropriate counseling uh, resources online that are more affordable than some, especially for couples. I love that. Mm-hmm. I just had a conversation with uh, an individual who spent, they said they spent $20,000 on their uh, recovery. <clears throat> and so I think that what you're doing is necessary, making something that's more affordable. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, I see it so often where people don't go get the help that they might need or might want and it's and like in Canada we have relatively free health care there is um, still certain stipulations for like prescriptions and everything but sometimes counseling just isn't covered under certain people's um, insurance plans and it makes me really sad because it often comes at the time where people are Uh, either financially strapped or just don't have the means to go and get that uh, therapy or the counseling and being able to give them an alternative option that's being funded um, through different routes within my business in order for the counselors to be paid appropriately but also provide at cost counseling for a client is huge to me that is that is great it's a great idea great thoughts thank you Um, So jumping into uh, fight the new drug stuff and and discussing the harmful effects of pornography, I guess the first question I want to ask, Chanel, is when was the first time in your life that you experienced some of the negative impacts of pornography? Yeah, um, I personally have never watched it myself, but in middle school, um, we had a student that struggled with it quite a bit, and he was really open about his struggles. You could see the pain um, but there was a lot of shame behind not being able to stop or feeling addicted to something because the feeling of addiction is never um, a good one so that was my first experience with just seeing the effects that can happen from it and then 
in university, um, something that kind of really piqued my interest is we had a, a guest lecturer come in talking about um, how helpful pornography, pornography can be for relationships. And I was trying to figure out like where the um, collective information for his studies were coming from, and it just didn't feel like there was enough backing behind it and it was almost like a propaganda push in my opinion um because at that time my uh personal life i had experienced someone um just seeing what it could do to families and it it really broke my heart um and having that contrast of having someone preach out for it where I was literally seeing with my eyes the negative effects that it has on family life and relationships was really hard for me and that's when I felt like it wasn't necessarily a topic that I could just sit upon and be like okay everything that you know university tells you is face value because it's not like professors are really smart but you have to do your own thinking and that's what that's what the university, yeah, exactly. The university is about asking questions, right? Mm-hmm, and critical thinking. You have to do that. And so you began the process of critical thinking and investigating the harmful effects of pornography for yourself, or how yeah, did that transpire? I just, I didn't want to accept what was being said because I'm a very, obviously I believe in research, but I also think there's a lot of, um, error when it comes to research because there can be biases that are um, occurring from what someone might think is the correct answer to say or how society tells them to feel. Yeah, you can find research to support almost any case. Oh, I'm probably sure you could find research on why, like, parrots talk and (laughs) you can teach them to say bad words and why it's like good for your mental health you know what i mean yeah like there's (laughs) there's research on everything everything. yeah exactly yeah and so yeah like you're saying i think that it's very obvious that i guess some studies are going to be biased or incorrect Mm -hmm. or just not vetted enough and in no way am i saying that the guest lecture wasn't um smart and well-respected in his field, because he definitely was, but there there was a sense of, um, if you don't agree with me, uh, you're wrong. And to me, I was like, well, try to tell me that as I'm literally watching something before my eyes happen because of the harmful effects of pornography. Right. Let's have a discussion about that. Right. And part of the scientific method is to form a hypothesis. That's basically what you were doing. You had an hypothesis that the harmful effects of pornography were hurting this family, this individual, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, that was my hypothesis. And, you know, I I got to see the um, benefits that happened after that was, uh, you know, pornography was stopped um, being used and viewed. And I just, I don't, I guess to me, like having... um, a healthy way to educate on the harmful effects was really important and when I came across Fight the New Drug I was really intrigued and you guys really um, captured my attention because I I was like okay here's a company that like it they're not stigmatizing against it they're not um, shaming people in the way that and as much as I love my faith um, but churches can be very uh, hard on some of these topics and you guys really just uh, hit the nail on the head and like hit that ball out of the park in terms of how to educate. And I saw that when I first um, started posting with you guys because the response, um, not only were people thanking me for finally bringing up this topic, but even those that disagreed with me like really wanted to keep a neutral conversation. They didn't... Uh, I mean, there were a couple of people that got defensive, um, but majority of those that disagreed, I think one of the first videos I did with you had 35,000 views. Yeah. And um, majority of those people were really respectful and they actually wanted to learn why um, I believed in your cause and why my opinion was the way that it was. That's cool. That's good to hear. 
Yeah. What took you to? Because you you said that you heard about fight the drug and it was we had a compelling message. You liked the, the way that we delivered that message, but what made you want to speak out in in your way? I think because I had a really um, personal connection. It's one that I don't feel as mine to completely speak on, but I did have a very personal connection with um, the harmful effects of pornography and being able to advocate it was not like advocate for um, why we should be a little bit more aware of those effects gave me a sense of like purpose and passion and being able to help this person that I knew in a way that was going to be appropriate, kind, and um, very approachable. That's good. And that's kind of where that started for me, is that, that's where I was like, I really want to be a part of this. That's cool. One question I have, because <clears throat> I think a big portion of our listeners, of our fighters around the world who are listening to this, they also want to take action, um, but maybe a portion of them aren't ready. <clears throat> they, mm-hmm. they haven't taken action yet to, to speak out about the harmful effects of pornography, whether that be in a one-on-one conversation or over their social media platform. And so I think it'd be a good to hear your advice. You have a big following on social media, and I think the way that you've gone about educating on this topic is very tasteful and very tactful. And so if you could give a couple pieces of advice to those who also want to speak out but haven't yet, Mm -hmm. as, as they go and post on their social, what are some things to consider before, before uh, publishing a post? Yeah, I, first off, I think anytime you're going against the grain of what society tells you is okay, because sex and pornography has been very glamorized in media and quite a bit lately. And anytime that you're going to speak out about that, it can be really scary. I remember the first time I went to post, I was like, not necessarily shaking, but I was like, okay, what's the aftermath going to be on this? Right. Um, but I think a really good thing to realize is if you are feeling this way, chances are people around you are feeling this way as well. Um, you, you end up being very similar to those that you keep around yourself. And if you have a larger following where Not everyone is going to completely agree with you, but just to remind yourself, you know, you do have a community that is supportive behind the messages that you post. Otherwise, they wouldn't be following you. And if it helps at least one person or reaches one person and helps form a different um, mindset and perspective around topics that need to be advocated for or against, then you've done your job right. And one post and the fear of backlash isn't um isn't worth holding back what you stand for and i think we don't have enough people speaking out on what they stand for which is why certain um, opinions and topics get glossed over without advocation for the other side And if we're not advocating for the other side, then we're not having conversation. And that defeats the purpose of what humanity is driven upon, which is conversing, uh, being cordial, and um, learning how to love one another without uh, judgment, like providing that unconditional love. I like that. That's good advice. That's good good motivation to, to act on our intuition. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just got to rip the bandaid off and do it and <laughs> you'll feel a lot better. I think one thing that you do really well is that you're, you throw out a post every once in a while. And it's not, it doesn't seem like you, your identity isn't based on this. And I think that oftentimes when it comes to this topic, we are so passionate because of our personal accounts Mm -hmm. that it can come across 
wrong or it can come across as harsh or judgmental, yeah. but I don't get that vibe from your posts. No, and I think a large part of that is I actually am a very sexually positive person. I believe sex is a really good thing and topics revolving around sex and intimacy are ones that I am very passionate about um, educating on. Right. It's -hmm. almost like there's two conversations. It's to have a conversation about healthy sexuality in today's world, you almost have to talk about the harmful effects of pornography. Yeah. Because of how prevalent it is. Exactly. Exactly that. Literally exactly what you just said. That is part of the reason why I never want to take a judgmental standpoint on it. Um, first off, because people never respond well <laughs> when you're like coming down with a silver hammer on them, you know what I mean? Right. And secondly, when you place it, and it's it's kind of simple psychology, when you place something that you're talking about in a more um, light, approachable, or um, accepting kind of way, people are obviously going to be more receptive to it because they feel like it's not dangerous like their fight or flight system is not causing them to recoil yeah and run away they're like okay this this feels safe this feels like common ground this feels where i can have a conversation and maybe there won't be this explicit and implicit judgment being placed upon me right that's beautiful i love that thank you i think that's very important to do and the way you said it makes a lot of sense um what about i'm kind of putting you on the spot here chanel so <clears throat> just uh <laughs> I just know I, that I acknowledge that right off the bat but what is your okay. fav- what what is your favorite um fight the new drug resource cuz we have the documentary we have um our website our blog our social media platforms or, mm-hmm. do you have a favorite I personally I think the website um and I think that comes from the fact that I do have a background in graphic and digital design cool so I find the way that your website lays out the information is really easy to understand it's always great for me or other fighters to refer back to and pull information from and it's also really um it's an easy way to direct people to what you're saying what your message is without them having to invest a lot of time right because if someone isn't ready to put um put their pornography habit down the chances are they're not going to want to invest time into watching um, a longer documentary or, you know, scrolling through social channels. But if you can push them toward a website and just say, hey, take a look at it, that's all I'm asking. The information that you provide is so well laid out and eye-catching that I think it helps spark that initial kind of thought or conversation or consideration to think differently. Right. That's great feedback. Yeah, um, you're welcome. Thank you. You guys have done well. <laughs> Thanks. And then the other question, it's going to put you on, on the spot again, and there's no right answer, but have you seen our documentary? I think I've watched parts of it. I tend to do too much at once. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and that happens a lot in my life. Totally. And I think we can all relate to that. The reason why I ask is because I think it's my favorite thing that we have. The way it's laid out is so good. And so um, I will send you a link to the documentary, Chanel. Yeah, I'd love to watch all of it. So that you can check that out. And um, I'll I'll also link in uh, the documentary to this episode for our listeners to check out. It's a three-part documentary. It's called Brain Heart World. And it's about 30 minutes per episode. So three episodes. Yes, okay, so I have watched parts of it. Yeah, you probably (laughs) maybe have seen, because it is three parts, I wonder if you've watched one of them. It's just good to talk about the resources that we do have because there's some listeners that haven't listened or didn't even know that we had a documentary. Mm Mm-hmm, totally. No, I'm really glad that you did. I think any um, point where people can have access to your information is a really big um, necessity. Yeah, for sure. Um, Well, as we've talked, Chanel, I've learned a lot about you. I've learned that you did really well in pageants. I learned that you are into, um, you do website, you develop websites. 
Yeah, that's, um, that's my like job job <laughs> at this time. <laughs> nice. And then you launched a business um, that you're going to get your master's degree. You already have a bachelor's in psychology. Um, I just got to say that you're uh, very, uh, you're doing a lot of good in the world and we appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. During this conversation, I've admired your ability to speak, speak to things regarding like mental health. <clears throat> so I wanted to ask you if you would leave our audience with one piece of advice. What would that be? Hmm. Um, based on all the knowledge and experience that you have. Well, I do know on every podcast, and I think I mentioned this a little earlier on you, on 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 yours. <laughs> um, I always say leave people better off than you found them. But if I were to pick another piece of advice that's a little bit um, more fresh, I think when you go to approach anybody about um, more serious topics and when you look at someone that you see is struggling try to look at them as if you're looking at a child because it's really hard to be judgmental when you're looking at someone through the eyes of um, compassion and if you see that that child in them that you know have has this really innocent light um, we all started off as that, and somewhere down the road, we've had uh, experiences that can taint or corrupt our, our visions and our viewpoint. But being able to bring it back at the end of the day will help you be able to approach people, especially even in conversations that are a little bit more heated, um, gives you a chance to c collect your thoughts and collect how you want to approach and talk to somebody. That's, that would be a really big one. That's great advice. Thank you. Yeah, that one I will give credit to my mom. <laughs> it's a good mom. But it's helped me in a lot of a lot of times where I've definitely had a little bit, um, I have a fiery personality, so. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that concept is just be more understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really just approach people as if you would want to be approached. approached. Um, no one wants to be yelled at or judged or uh, hit hard over the head 50 times with a bat. You know what I mean? Right. Well, um, Chanel, once again, on behalf of Fight the New Drug, we just want to say thanks for what you're doing in the world and thanks for your support that you show us as an organization. Thank you, and thank you for letting me be a part of it. Yeah, we, we, we thank you. We, we're fortunate to have you as a fighter. We're definitely Team Chanel, so. Woo! <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Consider Before Consuming. Consider Before Consuming is brought to you by Fight the New Drug. Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science facts and personal accounts. If you'd like to learn more about today's guest and the conversation we had, you can check out the links attached to this episode. Now, moving on from that, it's been said that the average person makes about 35,000 decisions every day. With all of that decision making in a given day, we are sincerely grateful that one of your decisions today was to listen to this conversation. So thank you. As you go about your day, we invite you to increase your self-awareness, look both ways, check your blind spots, and consider before consuming.